In this video, we'll be discussing the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. It's basically a condition characterized by excessive, unsuppressible release of ADH, either from the neurohypophysis or from an abnormal non-pituitary source. It results in water retention and consequent hyponatremia, low serum osmolality that is less than 280 milliosmoles per kilogram, and concentrated urine production with an osmolality of more than 300 milliosmoles per kilogram. There is no sign of edema or dehydration. So what leads to SIADH? It could occur due to malignancy such as a small cell carcinoma, a carcinoma of pancreas or due to ectopic ADH secretion. Drugs such as chlorpropamide, vincristine, cyclophosphamide, carbamazepine and clofibrate can also cause SIADH. Neurological problems caused by head injury, cerebrovascular accidents, meningitis or encephalitis, and certain infectious diseases such as tuberculosis, pneumonia, and lung abscess can also lead to SIADH. Hypothyroidism induces hyponatremia either by inappropriate release of ADH or by decrease in GFR. All these causes lead to excessive ADH release, which binds to receptors in the kidneys and increases water reabsorption from the urine. And as a result, there is decreased serum osmolality and increased urine osmolality. Patients usually present with headaches, nausea, vomiting, muscle cramps, tremors, and cerebral edema in severe cases. The diagnosis involves blood and urine tests which reveal hyponatremia, with serum sodium being less than 130 milliequivalents per liter, plasma osmolality being less than 280 milliosmoles per kilogram, and urine sodium concentration greater than 20 milliequivalents per liter, that is inappropriate natriuresis. There is maintained hypervolemia, suppression of renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, and low blood urea nitrogen as well as low serum uric acid. How do we treat a case of SIADH? Well, it's important to remove the underlying cause first, such as a tumor. Fluid is restricted to about 800 to 1000 milliliters per day to increase serum sodium concentration. In chronic situations where fluid restriction is difficult, demeclocycline is used which inhibits ADH action at V2 receptors. It is to be noted here that demeclocycline has an extensive side effect profile including skin photosensitivity and nephrotoxicity, and it should be used with caution. Conivaptin and tolvaptin are V2 receptor blockers, which are used in moderate to severe SIADH. In severe hyponatremia and in very symptomatic patients, such as those with severe confusion, convulsions, or coma, it is advised to use 3% intravenous hypertonic saline, about 1 to 2 milliliters per kg, given in 3 to 4 hours. It is important to note that raising serum sodium concentration too rapidly may cause central pontine myelinosis, which involves severe damage to the myelin sheath of nerve cells in the pons, and that leads to acute paralysis, dysphagia, dysarthria, and other neurological symptoms. Therefore, the rate of correction should be 0.5 to 1 millimoles per liter per hour for serum sodium.